Hey, hello, you're stuck in trial with Wolf Gorla, a couple minutes worth in an IT and IT security. Today, talking about Verizon and uh, Amazon S3. You know, one of the things that uh, is great and rewarding and exciting about being in a security community is you oftentimes get uh, insight into what's happening well before anyone else does, right? So years and years ago, uh, when Amazon first released S3, and people started building apps on it, S3 of course being simple storage uh, service, and simple storage service does object storage, right? So a blob, a binary large object, like an image or a text file or something, not a text file, like an image or a uh, you know, data file or whatnot, that apps access. When that hit, we had a speaker on my side who was like, hey, by the way, check out the security of this. <laughs> Did you know there's problems? There's a real problems. So tip to you, uh, if you're using S3, Take a look at how it's configured and how it's permissioned. And uh, if you're involved with any projects for S3, give them a hand by scanning those S3 buckets and see how you can lock down. A good example of what happens if you don't lock it down? Well, Verizon's recent breach. Uh, it happened with a third party. It happened with a third party. A third party was using S3 to aggregate data on behalf of Verizon. Uh, I hear the record is count is at six million at the moment and those records were exposed to the internet. Someone found them, and uh, there go breach. Now, when I say someone found them, <laughs> that's actually the kind of interesting and scary part of S3 security. A lot of S3 security is set with this concept of, well, no one would ever guess our name, so we can have it uh, you know, open, read-only, because who's gonna guess? And if it's only read-only, well, you know, they're not gonna tamper with the files. And a lot of the early cookbooks instructed developers to set up the S3 bucket just that way. Read only, use a long complex name so no one can guess you. And we all heard time and time again about some of the disadvantages of security through obscurity. So you have this folder, you have this bucket uh, with all this Verizon data and it's open and it's available. And all people have to do is guess the name. Um, and once someone did, then it was game over. How can you find S3 buckets, you may ask? Uh, preferably trying this on ones you own, but there are tools like um, uh, Cloud Breaker and uh, I hate getting out the exit when you're trying to remember something. Uh, there are things like Cloud Breaker, there are things like uh, S3 Finder. Um, if you just look up on GitHub, there's a number of utilities, simple scripts, anything from Ruby uh, to Python, simple scripts that are going to try and enumerate and find these open buckets. And you can also point those same scripts with uh, at your S3 bucket to see if it's open, see what you can find. So that's how you find them. How do you fix it? Well, you go into the Amazon console and you set those permissions accordingly. Of course, depending on how the apps that are using those buckets are set up, uh, that could break things <laughs> if they have indeed uh, designed it around just knowing the name of the bucket. So work diligently with the development team to make sure that those apps are using creds for read write to get to the buckets and the buckets are you know hidden from everybody else. And if we don't, we become like Verizon who lost six million records. That's it for me. Do you have any good tips on uh, S3? Finding, auditing, securing? Hit me up in social media comments. Cheers.